Hello everyone, this is CEO Talks by Cosmonauts. My name is Timo um, and this is a brand new series that will be broadcasting, recording and also podcasting for you. Um, the idea behind here is to give you uh, a glimpse uh, of the minds behind some of the most innovative uh, companies in various of areas. This particular one will be looking at legal technology uh, and more, more precisely into justice uh, and uh, its uh, co-founder and MD, Masood. How many projects are you guys working on at the moment? Um, quite a few. Um, we are uh, spending quite a lot of time on our uh, platform, Justice One, um, because since it, its launch is being received extremely well, and we are now getting feedback about new things to add, about um, uh, other ways of delivering the content that we have. We're also working on some interesting data projects, which obviously I can't disclose at this stage, but they are very relevant uh, and very um, uh, uh, pertinent uh, to the market we're in, to the collections that we already have, the products that we already have. So we are very, very busy. Very busy. From, from your perspective, what do you feel has been the biggest gamble that you've taken as a business? The biggest gamble? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a gambling person. Uh, but maybe, maybe the closest uh, I can say that the biggest risk was when we um, maybe changed the business model for, for the company. Um, when did that take place? Uh, around 2009, 2010, um, up to that point, uh, our business model was um, working with data owners um, and creating digital products from what they had uh, and selling the products and sharing the income. Um, but with the uh, advances and tools uh, that became um, available through internet, World Wide Web, uh, many of the data providers um, could do the same thing themselves. Mm -hmm. Maybe not to the same deep level that we had, um, but they had the opportunity to do their own online services. So that became um, quite risky for us. Um, we couldn't sustain a business um, if we just carried on did, uh, did you start model. losing customers at that point? Well, we started losing data. We started losing products because yeah. we lost the licenses for these products. Um, so what we had to do was to change the model and focus more on data ownership um, and having more control over the data which we published. So we spent a lot of money, uh, both in terms of buying data, uh, collecting data, tagging, structuring, and all the resources we needed to uh, to implement these, um, which meant we spent a lot of our profit. You know, small independent company, uh, we've never borrowed from banks, we always uh, invested our own profits, but this was a very heavy investment, the biggest we've ever done. Um, and, uh, and we see the, the benefits today. So we had to take that risk, we couldn't mm -hmm. not change. Um, but that is probably the biggest um, uh, change that we have gone through. You know, has there been like a dramatic change in the type of professionals that uh, are, are working within the firm in comparison to what, what you were before that period uh, of the late uh, uh, to 2000s? What, what is the type of professionals that like you see that are more involved in the company now in comparison to the past? Well, uh, the, the biggest change has been the introduction of um, uh, content knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, Whereas uh, if you go back 10, 15 years and, and to when we started, we were basically technicians. Uh, we developed tools, um, we, we sold products, we supported products. Uh, whereas if you look at us now, we spend um, a lot of time and our resources on the editorial part of the products. We, uh, in a way, we create content uh, we uh, manage content, and that is um, uh, quite a key part of our business today because it's not just technology. Um, 
to be able to deal with legal information properly and fully, um, you do need the editorial element. Um, to what extent depends on your products and your services and your market, um, but that is um, uh, now quite a big department uh, within the company. Um, and we also have um, a legally trained staff uh, who are selling, who are supporting, who are training, because by having that legal knowledge, they can deal with the questions, they can be, deal with the um, issues more effectively. I often feel that uh, what distinguishes a good company from a great company is not when you, when you start something new and exciting, it's when you hit a brick wall and you have to reinvent yourself. You've obviously managed to do that, uh, you know, you've been running for uh, over 30 years, to be more precise, 32, 33 mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. Uh, you've always experienced a, a, a uh, hurdle that you've managed to overcome. Would you say that that's your most sort of proud moment as a company um, and, you know, as the, as the person behind that company? I, I, think, I think so. I think that, is, um, that has been quite a key change for us. So in terms of the, um, the management of the company and, and those who run the company, yes, we had to uh, take that decision and I was supported by the um, ownership of the company uh, and we've achieved what we expected to achieve. Um, in terms of pride uh, in the business, um, we have many things to be proud of. Um, you know, for a small, uh, you know, 35 man company based in London, um, selling to over 40 countries uh, to have achieved so much that we have achieved. Um, we are very, very proud. Um, we've had quite a lot of um, um, key uh, changes in the industry. In, we've introduced a lot of new things. Um, we were the first uh, commercial publisher who obtained a license from the European Commission to uh, create a commercial product from the key legal information database, Celex. Um, until then, it was an internal database for them. Um, we were the first one who created a CD-ROM product of illegal information, again, of Celex um, in 1989. Um, we were the first who produced a CD-ROM of a UK um, uh, legal information title, the weekly law reports. Um, and we were the first to develop this interactive uh, legal citator, just site, uh, which was well ahead of its time. So we've had quite a lot of um, influence in, in, in the industry. And, uh, uh, you know, we've seen a lot of what we've done has, shall we say, inspired others. Um, so we are very proud of that. Legal tech is a relatively young industry. Um, in fact, like looking uh, five, six years ago, there's been a lot of skepticism uh, looking at, uh, at, at that segment uh, of legal offering. Can you see a lot of new companies coming in place? Uh, you're obviously probably one of the first innovators uh, within the space. And as you said, you've probably you know, founded the uh, basis for a lot, a lot more to happen. Um, as a CEO, what do you think has been uh, sort of this snowball moment for the sector? When do you think the legal sector has opened up to innovation? Um, I think maybe the, the simple answer would be uh, the advent of World Wide Web, the internet. Um, you know, we can all see the impact of that on, on what we do now, what we will be doing in the future. Um, but I think there is, there's one other um, uh, change which maybe started um, all of this, and that was the introduction of the CD-ROM technology. If I go back to when we started, um, we, had, um, we had some content, some databases which we um, uh, sold through an online platform, but delivery was through dial-up modem, compared to now extremely slow. Um, and that was an issue. You could not uh, offer a huge amount of content. You could not offer um, 
interesting features um, because of the speed, the limitations um, imposed on you by speed. Um, until the CD-ROM age, suddenly you had uh, the opportunity to offer large amounts of data um, and uh, no speed problems. Everything running on your machine, uh, which gave developers and software developers and, and front-end developers, it was, a, it was amazing for them to be able to add features and functions to take um, advantage of the content. Um, and that really encouraged everyone to, um, um, to innovate and to focus more and to add more content. That was a huge change. Um, obviously, when, uh, when we all got used to that, we then said, okay, this is fine, but uh, the product is static, is, so it's not updated often enough. Um, in fact, we had to develop uh, a, an interface to um, combine the CD-ROM data and online data and to give them to the user seamlessly and, and so on. Uh, and then we moved to the internet age, uh, so fine. We can access lots of data, uh, no speed issues, and that um, kind of um, uh, the opportunity to develop more and more and innovate more and more continued. But I, I still think that the change that CD-ROM technology introduced was a turning point. Um, I, I remember, um, you know, going back to the question you had earlier about um, being the first, being innovative. When we developed our CD-ROM products, um, not many uh, had CD-ROM drives. So we always bundled a CD-ROM drive and the CD product as a package. And we had engineers we used to send to barristers or law firms to install the CD-ROM drive and then install the software for them to access our products. Um, so that was quite interesting. You know, there's been a lot in the media about uh, in company leaders overworking themselves, <laughs> not being able to find a routine. Uh, you know, what, what, what's your routine? What's your opinion? Um, well, I think, I think the word you use, uh, routine, is the key. Uh, you have to have a routine. Um, I, um, I try to make time for doing things which would help me relax. Uh, I go to the gym, for example. I just don't go to the gym because if you just go and um, do exercises on your own, you always have an excuse not to go to. <laughs> but if you join a class or classes and, and you go with others and there's always a banter, there's always you know, the expectations that you'll be there and so on, you're committed more. Well, what was your favorite subject in school? Maths? Maths and then at the university, computer science. Uh, I was actually that when I started my university degree, I, I was studying um, electrical engineering, um, but I had the opportunity to switch and I changed to computer science. Um, yes, I was fascinated by the power of, of coding to be able to write a small piece of code and to achieve so much, um, and always looking for um, a problem. Uh, for which you can find a solution by writing code, um, which has continued until today. You know, applying technology to legal information has been um, the most amazing part of my life because uh, this is the, the um, um, everything I wanted to achieve by you know applying this this knowledge, this um, skill to solve a problem. Do you have a big uh, team behind you? Like, do you still code yourself? Um, yes, and um, we, you know, we are big, but we are, at the same time we are small and we have to cover for each other and so on. So uh, maybe I cannot write code in the same way that I did um, 20, 25 years ago, uh, but there are lots of other things which I do. I, I roll my sleeve up. I. I get involved in the integrity, I cover for my colleagues uh, for holidays and so on. So yes, I do get involved. So it's a very much sort of a team, very orientated environment. Very much. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, we have uh, you know, a few fire, fire questions for you, okay. um, which are going to be uh, completely um, catch you by surprise. Um, they have 
nothing to do with Lego tech at all. Okay. Uh, it's just interesting to find, you know, where, where you come from. So first one, Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Trek. Rock or jazz? Jazz, for sure. Cat or dog? Cat. Brexit or no Brexit? No Brexit. Train or plane? Train. Book or a movie? Book. Chicken or fish? Chicken. Beach or mountain? Mountain. Early riser or night owl? Early riser. Red or blue? Red. Oh. Red forever. Red forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's all from us folks. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure to uh, interview Masood here at their lovely offices in Camden. Um, if you have missed that, uh, you will be able to watch uh, a not too heavily edited version of it on our CEO talks.biz and you're also going to be able to download the podcast of this interview. Uh, once again, absolute pleasure, Mr. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure.